this one. We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, on this evening, we step into the sacred freedom of the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. On this holy night, Jesus found himself with the disciples 
knowing that the hour had come. As we prepare our, our, ourselves to step into this sacred freedom, let us acknowledge the Jerusalem of our hearts for the times we may have failed to live in the fullness of Christ. I confess to my dear God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly really sin in my, in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, my, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and, and you, my, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. to God in the highest and on Let us pray. O oh God, you who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, and trusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. 
the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbour, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two door posts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire, it must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. Can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? 
the cup of salvation I will praise. I will call on the Lord's name. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vow to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The blessing cup that we bless A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord, and in turn passed on to you. That on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it and he said this is my body which is for you do this as a memorial of me in the same way he took the cup of the supper and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I give you a new commandment. Love one another, just as I have loved you, says the Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was before the festival of the Passover and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were with his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And so he got up from table, removed his outer garment and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then Lord said Simon Peter, Not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He's clean all over. You two are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to God, Jesus Christ. A very good evening, everyone. Good evening. The hour has come. That's the moment today. The hour has come. Before I step into this whole experience of the hour today, we need to understand what we are celebrating today. We are at the upper room and Jesus knows that the hour has come for him to take leave of his disciples, of the apostles. Today's celebration is what we call the doorway. It's a point of entrance into the whole sacred freedom that we are going to celebrate the next three days. It's the passion, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. It's the crux, it's the center of our faith of the Christian faith, the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. 
And Jesus knows that this is the hour. He has spoken about this very often in his writings, um, in his teachings. John, the Gospel of John, is one who pays very clear, close attention to this word hour. If you remember when Mary, at the wedding of Cana, asked Jesus if he could see to the wine. Woman, my hour has not yet come. When he met the woman at the well at Samaritan, Samaritan woman, he said to the woman, the hour will come when you will worship neither in this mountain or in that mountain. You will worship the Father in the spirit of truth. The hour. There's a whole string, a whole litany of words of the hour in the Gospel of John. You will find it. Even at the hour of the last moment, today's gospel, knowing that the hour had come. Even after, at the cross, he would say, Mary, behold your son. And to John, behold your mother. And the gospel ends at that hour, Mary entered the home of John. It's about the hour. As you enter into this sacred kingdom, I'm just going to ask you for a moment. If you know that this is going to be your very last night, that tonight you are about to take leave of this world and you are going to spend it with your friends or your family, what is it that you would like to tell them? What is it that you would like to leave behind the ones that you have loved and loved to the end? What is it that you would like to say? Because today, my dear friends, this is the last and the final lecture and sermon of Jesus. It's over. It's his last sermon to the disciples. He had to give them everything that he had. He had to give it to them. And he had to do it in one language, the language of love. That's all he had to do. He had to show how perfect his love was for his disciples. That was all he had to do. Because the gospel tells us this, he loved them and he loved them to the end. That is all. So much of that intense, of that depth of God's love, of God's mercy that he just had to do it for them tonight. And as I said to you, if you had a moment tonight and this was your last night on the face of the earth and you had to spend that night to treat your loved ones and your family, what would be your message to them? What would be that gift that you would hand them to you, to them? Today, my dear friends, Jesus gave them three gifts. He gave them three gifts. Today, we celebrate the institutional institution of the priesthood. Secondly, it's the institution of the Eucharist. And thirdly, it's the mandate. Monday, Thursday, mandate. Love one another as I have loved you. Maybe it's good if you could just take a moment to look at the one on your right and your left. Just look at that moment. And you could tell that person, I love you. Just look at the person on your right and your left and just say, I love you. Because that's the perfection of God's love. Some of you are going more than that word. You're finding more things to say now. Just wait till we finish the Eucharist. The perfection of love. It has all to do with something that you could give someone. And that is why when you look at the first reading, it's a movement of the Passover. To a Jewish man, to a Jewish woman, the Passover is the greatest event and experience of life for them. Even to this year and to this moment, they will still celebrate the Seda meal. They will sit down and talk about the Passover of how Moses brought them out of bondage and slavery. That Passover from sin to grace, from death to life, is something that is ingrained deeply into the life of a Jewish man or woman. And Jesus took that image and he gave them the Eucharist. But still, after giving them the Eucharist and said, do this in memory of me, for every time that you partake of this Eucharist, you eat my body and you drink my blood, you partake of my, my being, Jesus said. And that is why, my dear sisters and brothers, 
every time that you enter into this Eucharist, you enter into the love of Christ. If you only know the immensity, the depth, the height, and the width of that love that God gives you in the Eucharist, that's the longing of the Eucharist because that's the fulfillment of God's love. No greater love can one have than to give his life for another. And that is what you will see tomorrow when he gave his life for all humanity. That's the intense depth of his love for all of us. No greater love can one have. And if you can only capture that love, you will understand that love. Love, my dear friends, can only be seen in the language of sacrifice. Love can only be understood in the language of sacrifice. I no longer live, you live. And that is sacrifice. And that's the depth of love that you could give anyone. Because love is to give and to give till it hurts. That is total abandonment of true love. And he had to show this and give them that model of love. And that is why he went down and washed the feet of his disciples. It is the most despicable act you could ever think of, my dear friends. You call me master, and yet the master went down to the feet of his disciples. That is why at the act of the race gospel, when Jesus was washing the feet of Peter and the rest of them, they never knew that there was a betrayer among them. There was one who would deny him. It was all about the basin, the towel, and the pitcher. That's all. And Jesus went down. But the first thing he had to do to wash his feet was to take out his outer garment. And that was an act of leaving his authority, his power, his status, his ego, his self. Whoever he was, he had to let go of that. And that is why he removed his outer garment. And that is why St. Paul would say in Philippians 2, 6, 11, Though he was in the form of God, Christ did not deem equality with God. He emptied himself and took the form of a slave. That was what he did. You can only love when you're able to remove that outer garment. You're able to give when you can remove that outer garment of yourself. Because many of us are finding it hard to let go of that outer garment. Peter was restless when Jesus came to wash his feet. Judas may have been in a state of shock. The disciples may be wondering what he's trying to do. Because in the Jewish culture, in the Jewish circle, whenever someone travels and comes to the home of a guest, the first thing is the slaves or the servants will rush out to wash the feet of the master or the guest. And after that, the host will put perfume on the hair so that the fragrance of the perfume would be in the house. And then the guest walks into the house and enjoys the meal or the festival. But Jesus went down before the festival of the Passover. He took off his outer garment and he went down to wash the feet of his disciples. To love is easy, my dear friends, but you can only love when you're able to wash feet. Because washing feet is all about forgiveness and love. Jesus could have stopped and said, Peter, I'm not going to wash your feet. Judas, I'm not going to touch you. But no, he went on. He went on to wash the feet of all those who would desert him in the Garden of Gethsemane, all those who would desert him when he stood at the foot of the cross. But he knew that is humanity in life and humanity in love. My dear friends, you either love or you don't love. And if you love, you wash feet. That is all you do in life. If you really love, you wash feet. In a very symbolic way, you would take off your outer garment to love. You would only love when you can take off yourself, of your ego, and tell yourself, I love you for what you are, and I will give you for what you are. If not, my dear friends, you will never be able to love. We will step into this whole experience this evening. Twelve wonderful people will step before us to have their feet washed. Maybe if you look closely, you will find Peter there. If you look really closer, you might find Judas. 
No, I'm just joking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now they won't come up. I invite you now to enter into this most solemn moment of washing the feet. And as the preparations are made for the washing of the feet, the church invites us to look deep into our lives, what it is to step out and to wash the feet of one another. No greater love can one have than to wash the feet of his disciples. It is a tradition in the church that began from the very beginning of Christ. Let us ask the Lord for the grace this evening that as we enter into this depth of God's love, the self-emptying of the Jerusalem of our hearts, that we will give ourselves to one another.
will serve you, and I will praise you. You have given hope to me. I was unworthy, your cross has saved me. You're the worthy Lamb of God. Hard days, broken people, ruined lives are why you died on Calvary. Your touch is what I long for. You have given life to me. Make me a servant, humble and be. Lord, let me live up those who are we. Christ taught us to love and to serve one another through the very washing of the feet of his disciples. Let us now pray to the Father for the strength and the courage to do as he did. 
Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, priests, and religious, that the gospel they preach will grant us servant hearts that love without prejudice and serve without thinking of our own status. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our country, that they will be able to make the right decisions for the growth of our nation and pursue what is just and right. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, poor and marginalized, that God will fill their emptiness and renew their spirit, granting them peace of heart and mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the RCIA elect, that the Lord will protect them from all evil and give them strength as their journey towards full communion with the Lord is coming close. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that by the power of the Spirit, we hunger and thirst for reconciliation and be peacemakers who have the courage to be faithful till the end. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and the needs of those who have asked for our prayers, we now pray in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, guardian of our homes and our family, hear our prayers this evening for the church and for your people. We pray that you will fulfill all our needs, our petitions, as we place our trust in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, as we gather together this holy night, and as we begin the Easter Triduum, united with the Church throughout the world, we commemorate the suffering and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We begin as he did at the Passover table at the Last Supper. At the Chrism Mass last week, our bishop, united with the priests and the people of the Diocese of Penang, consecrated the oil of the Holy Chrism and the Blessed Oil for the use of the anointing of the sick in the preparation of catechumens for baptism. Tonight, we shall receive the chrism and the holy oils, which we will use in the celebration of sacraments this year. By means of these powerful symbols, the crucified and risen Savior continues in our midst the work he began at his death and resurrection, which is forgiveness, healing, and new life. Oil of the sick. Behold, the oil of the sick that has been blessed by our bishop for the healing of body, mind, and soul. May those touched by this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in mind, body, and spirit. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. 
Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Oil of the Catechumens. Behold the oil of catechumens that has been blessed by our bishop for the anointing of those preparing for baptism. May those anointed with the oil be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and to reject evil in all its forms as they prepare for the saving waters of baptism. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Oil of the Holy Chrism. Behold the holy chrism, a mixture of olive oil and perfume, which has been consecrated by the bishop and the priest of our diocese. It will be used to anoint infants after baptism and those who are to be confirmed, bishops and priests at their ordination, and altars and churches at the celebration of their dedication. May all people on churches touch with this oil be signs and witnesses of God's love and faithfulness and experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God. Please be seated.
Dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice that of hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we step into the prayer phase and to the Eucharistic prayer, we bring before the Lord the intentions of this evening's Mass at the foot of the altar. And for your personal intentions lying within you, especially for the members of your family and loved ones, to love one another as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, Father, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to the setting, all glory may be made to you. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make this humble and prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts and offerings, this holy and unblemished sacrifice, which we offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, to unite and to govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. 
Remember, Lord, your servants. And all of us who are gathered here, I invite you to pray for all the living members of your family, for those who are near and far. We ask you, Lord, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you, Lord, this sacrifice of praise. And they offer it for themselves wherever they are and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and their well-being, and to paying their homage to you, Lord, the eternal and living and true God. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, our husband, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James and John, Thomas and Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus and Cletus, Clement and Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that your whole family gathered here order our days in your peace, and command that we may deliver it from eternal damnation, and count it among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray. To bless and to acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, Father, God Almighty, he gave you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice. And holding this Lord in his holy and venerable hands, he once more gave you thanks and said the blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, O Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, gathered this evening, 
offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, this holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be brought to the hands of your holy angel, to the altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who are gathered here through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son and be filled with every grace and everlasting blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. I invite you now to pray for the deceased members of your family and loved ones, those who have gone before us. Grant them, Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servant, who those sinners, we hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, St. Stephen, Matthias and Barnabas, with St. Marcellinus, Peter and Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha and Lucy, with St. John Paul II and St. Faustina, with St. Francis and Clara of Assisi, and St. Pio of Pietracina. And all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into the company not weighing our merits, by granting us your forgiveness, through whom you continue to make all things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them, and you bless them. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With faith and confidence, we turn to God the Father as we pray. Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin. Safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. we we'll take a moment to offer that peace to one another. Peace be with you all.
questions. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you enter under my roof. Only say the word, word and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ speaks to me. This is the body that was given up for us. This is the chalice of the new covenant of blood. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. We now invite Catholics to receive Holy Communion. Sekarang kita menjemput umat Katolik untuk menyambut tubuh Kristus.
love was gone, nailed to bleed and die, to reach and love one such as I. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We end the whole celebration of the Lord's Supper. We will have the transfer of the Eucharist to the garden and to the altar of repose. I invite you tonight, if you have the time, to spend an hour or so, just in the stillness of the silent tonight, just to be with Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, just to enter into that moment of the depth of his love for all humanity. Jesus told Peter to stay awake and pray, and he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Let us ask the Lord for the grace tonight to spend that moment in silence, adoration tonight. Briefly, tomorrow's celebration of Good Friday begins in the afternoon at 2.15. We will have the Novena to the Divine Mercy followed by the Way of the Cross and service at 3 p.m. The second service will be in the evening at 7.30 p.m., the Way of the Cross and the Good Friday service. Finally, if you would like to offer Mass intentions during the weekend and for the Novena, the counters are open at the entrance of the church. And please do take a card, the Novena card, to fill it up with your petitions, your thanksgiving, and you may drop them at any corner where the baskets are available. These Novena petitions will be presented during the Novena Masses towards the feast of the parish. We who share this faith.